Great, sounds good. So good morning, everyone. I'm, my, my name is Suzanne, we're Senior Chair of LAD XCOM. And today's purpose of the meeting is to give you an update of what SCI has been doing, also the different committees that um, what we've been doing. And also we have invited a couple of ASC staff to give you some resources during this time. So we'll have a couple of presentations from the S, uh, ASC staff. And then as everyone know, our upcoming leadership conference is going to be on October 16th to the 17th. Oh, sorry, October 15th to the 16th. And Nicole Bayer, who is going to be our incoming chair, will be leading that effort in terms of our virtual uh, leadership training. So she will take over near the end of the meeting to let you know what to expect. And also since this is our first virtual meeting to just give you a guidelines in terms of you know, the upcoming events. And then at the very end, everyone will have the opportunity to talk about what's going on in your chapters and what your needs are so that we can help you navigate through your difficulties or whatever success stories you may share with us. So anyway, I will turn it over to Glenn Bell, who will be giving an update on the SEI um, side of things. Sure, great. Um, welcome, everyone. It's good to see you all. I think I'm seeing you all here. Um, I'll give a, a broad overview of what's happening in SEI and um, Laura, is Laura on yet? I just got off another call with her. I think she was going to join. And Suzanne, and I see John on too, can help, um, you know, really, really back me up. Um, there are a lot of great things happening in SEI. We've been extremely busy. I see Brittany as well. Welcome, Brittany. Um, I'll give some high-level overviews. Um, as you all know, most of our content, all of our content, um, is being delivered virtually now. Um, we had a very successful Structures Congress virtual in April and the virtual work has been continuing um, on a series of live chats. Um, we moved the live chats to a YouTube platform now. We have a new YouTube channel. And last week started with a first live chat um, with Laura and Andy Herman. Um, Brittany, can you help us um, to help to determine how to get on the YouTube link there for future? Yeah, lives? I'll pop the I'll put the link for the channel here in in the chat, and um, so make sure you subscribe and all of that good stuff. We've added it to our signatures here at SEI too to help spread the word about it since it is brand new, just started. Yep, great. So that's a great development. We also have been, uh, we started a series of, um, of chats on uh, career development, uh, which I have been hosting. Um, and we're about to do number three of four. If, I hope you, some of you had have a chance to take advantage of them. Um, the first one was really on general concepts for career decisions and then the following three were uh, focused on various uh, areas of career development from entry level um, to an entry level was defined as coming out of school up until um, sort of project engineer stage. And then um, project management stage is number three, um, mm -hmm. which we'll be doing, what is the date for number three coming up? Um, the 22nd of September, right, Suzanne? Do I have that right? That's right, with Victor and with Emily Guglielmo. That will be with Victor and El Emily Guglielmo. And we'll be talking about, generally about the stage of project management. So moving from project engineer to project manager and uh, towards principal. And then the fourth and final of those will be in October. October 20th here, I'm looking at my calendar. Um, and that will be Ann Ellis and Joe DiPompeo. 
and that will be on uh, leadership um, at the principal level and beyond. We sort of bookend that subject with um, Anne, who has worked in the C-suite of AECOM, so it's about a larger firm as you can get, uh, to Joe Di Pompeo, who started and runs um, his firm, Structural Workshop, which is on the smaller end of the spectrum. So I hope you will enjoy that. All of these um, talks are available on the SEI uh, site um, for viewing after the fact. We've also included with them a number of uh, resources, um, things where you can go back and dig deeper on any subject. So we're looking forward um, to continuing the other two there. We are participating in the virtual technical conference, which starts this coming Monday. Um, and hard to believe it's happening that fast. And I believe the structural part kicks off at around noon on Monday. Is that correct, Suzanne or Brittany? We have three sessions uh, for structural. One is on the Millennium Tower, the Leaning Tower of San Francisco. Uh, one is on SE 2050. And the third is on conceptual design. And I don't know that I, I haven't gotten them in the right order, but those will be happening on Monday and Tuesday of next week. Glenn, I believe it all starts at 11 a.m. on Monday. 11 a.m. on Monday. Okay. And I, I just found my notes here. The conceptual design session runs from noon to 2.30 on Monday. Uh, Millennium Tower is from 3 to 4 on Tuesday. And SC 2050 and Embodied Carbon is on is four to five on Tuesday. So that's really exciting as well. Um, we've also been working on a number of collaborative initiatives with other organizations. One of those is the Institution of Structural Engineers in the UK. We periodically hold leadership meetings uh, between our two organizations and we had one last week. Um, and we're working on a number of initiatives there too that I want to highlight are, um, we have connected our SE 2050 group, our carbon reduction group with uh, the analog in the UK, which is the CETG, that's uh, that stands for the Climate Emergency Task Group. They have similar goals and activities to our SE 2050 group. And so we're uh, encouraging those two groups to work together in sharing information and hopefully in working together so we can work as a profession in, in reducing net um, embodied carbon in our structures um, in the future. Uh, we'll be holding a workshop on that. Those are amongst the participants who are working in this area. I don't know what the full invite list will be um, and we're shooting to hold that near the end of November, early December. We also are doing a lot of collaborative work with NCSCA and uh, CASE of ACEC. Um, among the things that we're working on together is we formed a joint committee on diversity, equity, and inclusion. A lot of you probably saw the position statement that we wrote um, shortly after the George Floyd tragedy where SEI case and NCSEA got together and worked in that area. Now we're working on various initiatives. We also in SEI have our own dedicated committee on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and uh, that has, I think they've held their first or maybe their second meeting. Um, that group has recently been populated and is uh, growing. Um, we're working in some areas on leadership development. Our SE 2050 group, uh, again, coming back to that, is working um, on a number of initiatives in building their website and online resources. And if Laura is on, she can confirm what I'm going to tell you. But I believe they have a goal to launch a lot of material by November of this year in that initiative. Their ultimate goal is to provide the tools and resources to allow us as a profession 
to get to net zero embodied carbon by the year 2050. Um, another area that I wanted to mention to you, which is not strictly SEI, but I'm looking for SEI input on, is work that we're doing um, on the society level, the ASCE level, in looking at our institute operating procedures. Um, you may or may not know that among the various governance um, and policies and procedures document that we have in SEI is one called the Institute Operating Procedures. And that sets forth um, the ways in which the various institutes can operate and work with each other. Um, and it includes um, a lot of details about, for example, how revenues are shared around the organization, um, uh, credit for society dues and things like that. And I'm uh, on a task committee that is looking to, uh, for the next revision of the Institute Operating Procedures. And one of our goals is to see um, if we can't do a better job in writing into those procedures things that encourage and incent the institutes to increase membership. I think we, we all know that we're challenged these days in attracting and retaining members um, into ASCE. Um, the dynamics of that have changed and the value proposition, particularly to younger members um, is changing. That doesn't mean that it's less or more than it was in the past, but um, there are new dynamics. It's a dynamic situation, the membership uh, proposition. Um, and by the way, if you'd like to read a little bit more about my thoughts on why professional association membership is more uh, valued than ever, I just wrote an editorial for the September issue of Structure Magazine. So you can get some, you can read my thoughts on that. But um, just to go back to that, we have a task group within the Institute Operating Procedure Group that is studying ways that have been, what has been tried and been successful um, in, and particularly at a local level in, in attracting membership and retaining membership, what things seem to work, what things have been tried and haven't worked for various reasons, and to try to build those methods into a situation where each of the institutes really considers building membership a top level goal a board of directors goal of their organization. Um, I think this is talked about in SEI a lot. Um, certainly there's a lot of activity at the staff level. I think my sense is that in, uh, at, at the local level, um, it is talked about um, a lot, but it's not so much, I will tell you, a focus of discussion at our board level where we tend to talk a lot a lot, a lot of technical things, and I think it should be. And that is, I've learned, sort of common among the other institutes as well. So we're looking to raise um, institute membership to a very high level, a board of governors level initiative at every, um, in every institute. It's a critical issue. Um, if you've ever sat in an ASCE board of direction meeting, you know it's talked about all of the time. Um, yet a lot of that, those goals don't filter down to the institute boards and that's what we're trying to build up. So I would welcome um, any input and perhaps um, we can work up some survey um, uh, that, would, that would pose various questions um, for your local leadership groups in this regard. We're very interested in your input and um, in experience with building up membership um, and engaging the highest levels of leadership there. Um, I don't wanna to talk too long. I don't know how long I have here, but let me invite um, Suzanne and John and Laura, if she's on, there's a lot of other initiatives going on uh, right now and I'll invite you to chime in with me. Suzanne? Um, I think Glenn covered it pretty well uh, with the mention of VTech next week and career path series and um, of course the YouTube channel 
SCI Colorado just in um, in July did their lecture series events that was through LED and sponsored by the SCI Futures Fund. Uh, that has been made available on the YouTube page. Great presentation by um, Kevin Lamalva on structural fire engineering. Mm -hmm. so that out. That's all I really have to add. Okay. John, anything you want to add? The only thing I don't think I heard you mention was the, the Cross E2, the Committee for the Reform of Structural Engineering Education. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so you may know that uh, we, we had a Committee on Reform of Structural Engineering Education. We formed a, let, let me back up and organize the way I'm going to approach this. Following the original um, publication of the SC Vision document in 2013, we formed a number of committees to help um, advance many of the initiatives that were set forth in there. Performance-based design is another example, um, and I won't go through all of them. One of them was a committee to reform structural engineering education. That committee um, made some progress in some areas, but it did, I think, um, struggle with the fact that we, the Board of Governors, gave it a very broad and ambiguous um, uh, mission. And they had trouble getting their arms around the whole thing. And this all came to a head in our April Board of Governors meeting when we really decided that uh, we, ne we needed to focus their efforts a bit more in order to make progress against this you know, huge, we're, we're trying to determine what the structural engineer, uh, engineering profession and what qualities of the structural engineer of the future 20 to 30 years out should be. And then how do we set ourselves on a path of engineering education to get there? Um, so we decided to um, really start again with a new mission, which is more confined and manageable. The new mission basically um, has similar elements to the old in that defining the qualities of the structural engineer of the future and the practice of structural engineering is very important but rather with tasking the group to try to determine everything that needs to be done in the next 20 to 30 years, we pulled back and said, what are the most important things that we need to accomplish to work towards that goal in the next five years? So we, uh, we formed a new group with a new mission to do that. Um, it's a great group of 10 people. Uh, John is on that group. Um, anyone else here present? I'm looking at names. I don't recognize any other names, but it's half academics and half practitioners. I'm really excited about it. Um, broad and diverse representation from uh, in many respects. So we are about to, we just have a doodle poll out for our first meeting and we'll keep you appraised of how that's happening. Uh, so John, thank you for the reminder on that. The other thing I meant to mention that forgot was not cross E, but the other cross, confidential reporting on structural safety, which um, I'm sure you're all aware we launched um, in the US just about a year ago. We're about to publish our second newsletter. We're doing very well. And we're in the process of reaching out uh, more broadly in the industry to um, make more people aware of what CROSS is, what it can do, how it can be used, and how everyone can contribute to it. Um, and um, we're doing, we're, we have an outstanding offer to companies and, um, and industry organizations to do uh, focused presentations on CROSS. Um, most of these Andy Herman and I are doing. Um, Next, uh, tomorrow, for example, we're giving one to um, Keywood engineers and constructors to their, to their interested participants. Um, the purpose is to get organizations and individuals using the system and involved in contributing reports and other things to it. So I will make um, you know, an open offer here to any local group who would like to have a focused presentation on CROSS in one of your meetings. Um, 
So that's, uh, I think that's probably all that I have. Glenn, quick question about your cross presentations. Yeah. If you're actively doing these currently with other organizations, is there a chance of capturing video of those to share? Uh, we could. The ones that are the ones that are open to industry organizations, I would say the keyword one is going to be recorded, but I think they'll probably want it for themselves. But yes, if we give one to a local chapter or um, we're giving one to the ASCE Denver branch actually um, later this month, uh, those, those can be recorded and made available too. Great. A lot of times the richness though is in the discussion that comes after the presentation. So, um, Recording is great, but um, if you're really interested, I would encourage you to um, take us up on our offer to do something focused for your group. We're happy to do it. Next, we have Kat Chan who will be presenting or updating us about the Chapter Resource Committee. Uh, thanks, Suzanne. Uh, so yeah, my name is Chad Shrand and I chair the uh, Chapter Resources Committee. And our essential task for those who might be new to the call is to uh, work on somewhat special projects um, based on ideas that come from our chapters on, on various needs they have. Uh, for instance, you know, uh, one of the main, um, the, I guess, distinguished lecture uh, program that Suzanne talked about, Colorado had just done, that's now a futures fund. Um, Futures Fund uh, funded initiative uh, came out of the committee as as we got feedback for years on years of uh, people wanting better and better speakers. Um, so this also came out of the um, the speaker list that we have, um, and one of the other ideas that you know has kind of come up through through us is the uh, the free webinar that everyone is entitled to as being an SEI chapter. Uh, so first and foremost, if you haven't used that yet this year or you're planning your events this year, um, you know, and you're worried about how to get a speaker to your site through all this, uh, we do still offer the free webinar uh, that you can get for being an SEI chapter. And I believe all the links to do that um, are in a lot of uh, Suzanne's emails that she's been sending out. So in terms of updates, uh, we're going through an updating uh, it's a little delayed this year, but the updating the distinguished or the speaker bureau list. Um, it's a list organized kind of by category of different speakers who have agreed. Uh, we, we reached out to and they provided topics and agreed to to offer those. So how that works is um, at least in the before times is you would typically contact the speaker and work out travel costs and all those sorts of things. Um, now, you might have a, a lot easier time uh, since we've all somewhat figured out this virtual world. Um, and when they're, when and dates and times are available, possibly give a, a virtual webinar. So uh, we will be contact, these are people we've already contacted and they say they're, you know, up for giving presentations um, and, and other, um, so you can contact other times people use them as basic ideas and they might have a local speaker who has a kind of a flair on that. Um, it provides more of a local flavor to the, to the presentation. So uh, we will be uh, updating that list again and putting it on the website. Um, I'm actually, if you look in the chats, gonna share where all that is, assuming I can get back to it. Uh, so um, this is on the, the LED or LED SEI website. Um, down there at the bottom is a couple resources. Um, other ones we have currently there are um, the chapter resource speaker list. There is a link to the Collaborate uh, Integrated Building and Structures resources, which have several of the presentations. Uh, Suzanne mentioned trying to get a lot of these recorded. Um, some of the stuff they've done over the summer is all kind of stored there. Uh, so that may be various places that are available to SEI chapters and members uh, once you log in uh, to visit. Um, another kind of tools on there are the TR Higgins awarded Funger lectures. That's through AISC. Um, they have a, a big award uh, for a, a distinguished speaker every year um, that is available. You would obviously have to apply through them, um, but that is a, another 
tool for getting speakers. And then there's the uh, Fazer Khan Distinguished Lecture Series, uh, which has numerous um, old presentations on video uh, that are available for download. Um, other things we're working on, working on and putting up, um, we have some lists on um, transitions and leadership for your chapters as you uh, sometimes transition from one group of leaders to another, or if you're starting a new group, how they might be set up most effectively. Um, some financial ideas um, using ASE tools for constant contact, um, how to contact your members. Uh, as Glenn said, you know, a big push forward is, is going to be um, be membership in, in ASE and other professional organizations and people, you know, when they're, when they're writing their checks for their dues, they have to feel that they are getting, um, there's value in that membership and part of that. And a lot of that is what the kind of boots on the ground stuff that all our chapters are doing. Um, so if you're, if you're in contact with them, um, you know, they, they are hearing from you, they're hearing about these resources, especially in times like this, when everything kind of gets, you know, throw it's thrown sideways. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a place they're going to look. They're going to look to SEI and they're going to look to ASCE um, for for that leadership and, and those resources. Um, and then the other idea is just, you know, a lot of this was, uh, again, a before times idea, but ideas for large and small events. Um, back when we used to have lunches and dinners and awards banquets. And hopefully uh, those will be ideas that we can uh, do in the near future. But until then, uh, they will still be ideas. So um, the last thing on the list is we are always, and it looks like we'll talk to this a little bit about the end, we're always looking for new ideas uh, for the next things to work on. So um, like I said, one of, the, one of the things that came up through was the, the Futures Fund initiative um, for the uh, Distinguished Lecture from SEI. And that, you know, it's, it's things like that that you're, we listen to you, what you guys want as your chapters and then try to help facilitate that through the tools of ASCE and SCI. So um, that's about all I have for chapter resources, but if anyone has any quick questions, uh, we can chat okay. about them. Hey Chad, you mentioned the uh, transition in leadership. Is yes. that a, a in, in progress document or is that available? It is in progress. It is, um, almost over the line. I honestly, I just need to, uh, several of these things, I just need to kick out the door and then get with Suzanne about getting them up on the website. So I uh, will set a, saw, you know, a date of two weeks and we'll try to get those out. So you can start okay, seeing perfect. those. And I know I have an email to you. Uh, I need to get back. Um, it's still, it's on the list of things to get done, but it's still there. So okay, cool. I'll be following up shortly. Great. Thanks. Anyone else? All right. Um, as always, if you think of something later, um, I believe my email, I'll add my email address if it's not there already to the, the chat and then we can, you can contact me on any uh, future ideas or uh, resources you're looking for. So thanks Suzanne. Next is uh, Matt Kaczynski, but he cannot join us today for the graduate student chapter update. Not to put you on the spot, Suzanne, do you have any update for GSE? I believe Antonio or Armin do. Yes, uh, hello, uh, my name is Antonio. I'm the current chair of the graduate student chapter leadership council. And uh, Matt actually asked me to give the update for the graduate student chapters. So actually we had our uh, quarterly meeting yesterday uh, where we are kind of in a transition of uh, leadership in the Graduate Student Chapter Leadership Council. And now Arman will take my place as a chair of the Leadership Council. Actually, Arman is in the, in the call too. Uh, and we also have uh, Furk, Furkan Lucesi. Uh, he's uh, from the University of Central Florida. He will be the vice chair. Um, and obviously, it's a two year commitment that's uh, guaranteeing kind of the leadership uh, of the uh, graduate student chapter leadership council for two years now uh, with Arman uh, being next year and then uh, Furkan uh, after that and we'll have the secretary uh, Chris Jackson uh, from Virginia Tech and the PR representative uh, Saman uh, from Florida International University I'm sorry I didn't mention uh, that Arman is from Michigan Technological University 
So yeah, we have uh, now the new kind of uh, leadership uh, board for the graduate student chapters. And I was going to speak in behalf of Arman, uh, kind of sharing some of the goals and things that we spoke, but I think it's better if he just takes off now and speaks some of the uh, main objectives that he has for the, for the new leadership of the graduate students. Yeah, thank you, Antonio. Uh, hi, my name is Armin Tadar, and uh, I'm a PhD candidate at Michigan Tech, and uh, current, I mean, I will be the next uh, president for Graduate Student Chapter Leadership Council. And uh, in the meeting yesterday, we uh, basically planned out our uh, goals for uh, this year, and we are hoping to get the uh, current chapters more activated in their uh, current situation and then actually uh, progress towards adding more chapters uh, uh, to the SCI uh, graduate chapters and uh, we, we also want to expand our uh, uh, collaboration between the SCI professional chapters so that is one another goal and we would like to also add some uh, resources to our social media outlets so that uh, we can attract more uh, students. Of course, we lost the opportunity to get more students involved in SCI uh, because of uh, cancellation of the uh, in-person uh, Structures Congress, but our goal is for the next Structures Congress, we will be, uh, we are hoping that uh, we can attract more uh, young audience uh, for uh, joining SCI graduates and chapters. Thank you, Alan yeah. and Antonio. Next, we have the board of governors. Now, does Victor want to talk or John want to talk? <laughs> well, yes, get over it. Yeah, I, was just gonna say, I think Glenn what, covered it all. A lot of uh, Glenn covered pretty much what we would want to cover. Um, just noting that the next board of governors meeting is on September 28th, and we have a full agenda of things. But if anyone in this call has items that they would like to raise up to the Board of Governors. Um, as noted, John Cleary and myself are your uh, delegates, you know, to the Board of Governors. We are your liaison. So if there's anything you wanted to note, please uh, shoot us a note and we'll be happy to convey that to the Board of Governors. Are there any questions about what the Board of Governors is doing or um, any other questions for Glenn, John, or myself? And we're going to have a new president on October 1st, Joe D. Pompeo. He's going to be a great president. So, Glenn, thank you for your service. Okay. It's been great. Pleasure. It's been fun. So I have to jump off now and get ready for another meeting, but um, thank you for allowing me to sit in and report um, and keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you all for your service to SEI and the profession. Thanks, Glenn. Thank you. Good Next, we have Miles Charles, who will be presenting about the student young member transition and best practice. Uh, Miles is from the AC staff. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Miles Truax. I'm the manager of student and younger member programs with ASC. Uh, this morning, I believe I was going to speak to everyone just kind of briefly about a uh, student and younger member transition. Uh, in general, you know, uh, renewal and transition is kind of in contingent on interest and the interest can be through engagement like uh, social and networking purposes or it could be a perceived necessity to obtain professional development opportunities. In either case, it's important to have an equal measure of both. And I thought the best way that I could probably provide specific examples to everyone would be to take some from what we recently had in our virtual student engagement activities grants. So what I did is I selected the top four that we had uh, recently reviewed and I just wanted to kind of share the ideas that they had on what was working and what they're building towards. Uh, the first one uh, was, uh, again, this is all, all things that have changed because of you know, new virtual environments. 
where they would previously reach out to specifically seniors who were graduating and they would have different types of events. They kind of changed things this year so that they had a congratulations packet that they were sending to these seniors. And that was just kind of a way of drawing them in, seeing what kind of interest they had and soliciting any kind of feedback that they would have as well. In addition to this, they then uh, incorporated what they considered to be a speed dating mentorship kind of mixer event. And the idea was to bring everyone together into a queue so that they could have a job shadow session with various local firms. Uh, they then would go beyond that uh, in that they would pair each student with multiple engineers, allowing them to kind of do quick rotations of where they can learn and connect with more people in the community and do all this from the comfort of their own home. Then they went one step further and they decided they wanted to have a virtual panel that they could then use to engage all these people that they've already been reaching out to. So it would be a panel of four to five, uh, generally people from a local YMF, that they would get together and they would be geared towards answering questions and providing information to students to help them best prepare themselves for the next step in their lives or their careers. I then go to uh, another grant that we had and this one was more of an opportunity uh, to reach out to students and provide feedback and discussion about life after graduation and what type of career goals and different things that they would be driven towards and what they're hoping to achieve. Uh, by doing this, they wanted to uh, make sure to invite them to future events so that they weren't necessarily just student events, but they could be YMF events or society events. They also wanted to have a virtual one-on-one -on -one session where it could be fully interactive for the students and YF YMF members so that they could share ideas they could then have different discussions as well as get ideas on how to polish their resumes, how to seek different types of career goals and their own personal goals. And that was kind of uh, bolstered with additional lunch meetings that were similar to lunch and learn meetings, but they expanded on these ideas that they've already been pursuing. With the third uh, grant that we had, it was the option of connecting with faculty advisors. They actually wanted to reach out and have the ability for these students to interact with committee, the commi committee on student member representatives and with local student leaders and members. By doing this, the goal was for the students to feel supported and comfortable with being able to ask questions and ask for help when needed so that they were influencing the students by raising their awareness about matters pertaining to their student preparation for their current life, life after college, for their early professional activities, and obviously their continued affiliation with the society. And then this kind of brings in the fourth uh, grant that we had, where it was very specific in what they were looking to do with these students. They actually wanted to prepare university students for the P exam and to also help them acquire the EIT licensure prior, entering, prior to entering the profession and competitively applying for jobs and or internships. They also wanted to allow younger members the chance to kind of give back and volunteer their time towards educating students in civil and environmental engineering and share their experiences as young professionals so that they're not only guiding them, but they're also providing their own personal insights into what they found was successful, what was prohibitive, and things that they should consider pursuing in the future. Did anyone, does anyone have any questions about these particular initiatives that they were taking or any that they were hoping to get more information about? And Miles, is this uh, published somewhere? These currently aren't published because a lot of these were just grant submissions that we actually had from late spring. Uh, so uh, they're either wrapping up some of these initiatives or they're just going through the completion process of sending us their reports for reimbursement. It's just like any of our grant processes where as they go through this, they then provide us a detailed report of everything that they've gone through in the process 
what they felt was successful, what they would change in the future, and then they also include different types of rosters and information that goes along with that. Once we have that information, we do plan on making that available just so it can be kind of a quick to-do list or a self-help guide that we can provide to uh, different individuals, and it'll likely be on our student and younger member pages. Mel, so the, the SAG uh, grants you mentioned, those would be, uh, just to verify, those would be available to our SEI chapters through their local um, section and branch leadership, is that correct? Uh, anytime that we anytime that we put out these grants, uh, it can be anyone that meets the requirements. Obviously, if it's student, then it has to be reflected in the student or some kind of younger member engagement. But yes, absolutely. As long mm -hmm. as you meet those qualifications, anyone could apply. Miles, would you put a link in the chat to a page where folks can learn more about that? For our different grants? Yeah. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Thanks. Thank you. Absolutely. Anyone else? Okay, well, if you can think of any follow-up questions you have later, please feel free to email me. You can always email me directly at mtruex at asc.org, or you could send an email to a younger member at asc.org, and I would be able to reply to you there as well. Thank you, Miles. Thank you. Next we have, I know we're running a bit uh, behind, but next we have Hannah Clark, who will be sharing about the new resources on the LTC site. Hi everybody, thanks for having me on to talk today. Can you hear me okay? Great. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So today I'm gonna be talking about, whoop, um, can you go ahead and enable screen sharing? Whoever's the host, Brittany. Thank you. All right. There we go. So I just wanted to show you guys um, the resources that I'm going to be talking today are on the LTC website. That's where Geographic Services works with the Leader Training Committee to develop all of these resources for sections, branches, and regions, but also many of them are applicable to the institutes as well. So before I go over the resources, I want to make sure you guys are able to find them. If you go to the ASC home site and then go to regions, sections, and branches here under membership and communities, this little call out right here, region section and branch resources, this will take you directly to the LTC resources page. So this is where we house all of our tools, um, whether it be society level tools or administrative tools or webinars we've hosted. We have resources for life members. Um, there's just a wealth of knowledge on here. And I'm just gonna briefly go through the site to help you guys understand how we have it organized. So if you click on the ASCE logo up at the top here, it takes you to our homepage where we have a message from the LTC's chair just talking about what's going on with LTC as right now we're preparing for the presidents and governors forum later this week. Um, if you're interested in how LTC got started, there's a brief description in the about page. Um, it also describes how many members are part of LTC and what they aim to provide, so what they're charged with and then we also have the events page so this is a really valuable page right now as we're all learning in the virtual world we're trying to be as agile as possible it gives you a chronological list of the upcoming events up here at the top and then it also gives you a physical calendar down here at the bottom and anything that's a past event remains on this physical calendar so as you'll see if you're interested in some of the topics that we've covered since um, the start of all of our virtual learning and working from home you can pan through this calendar to find some of the more interesting topics that you think might apply to you. And this will also give you some details on what that um, session webinar was actually about. We also have a contacts page. So if you see something on this site that you're interested in or would like to talk to an LTC member about, maybe it's something that you'd like to develop for an institute chapter or for any kind of activity that you guys are doing, you can find everyone's contact information and also the resources that they're in charge of maintaining and developing each year. It's all right here on the contacts page. LTC also gives out two awards each year. They give an outstanding section and branch award and they also give one for um, section and branch uh, outstanding websites. 
So we have all, we always list the winners um, each year and then we also attach all of their nominations forms. So you're able to see why they were chosen as winners and then that helps future nominees understand maybe what um, people are looking for when they're looking for a really well represented website. So all that information is here as well. Under the newsletter tab, we have LTC's reports. So they put these out um, after every in-person meeting. They typically meet three times a year, but as you can see this year, we've kind of gotten behind. So they're hoping to put out another one this fall once they have a really in-depth virtual meeting, but unfortunately the schedule hasn't worked for everyone. So that should get updated on um, this fall. And then I'm gonna go back to the resources page because this is really where everything lives. So we have a lot of interesting things on here um, that have been here for a while that are constantly updated. So things like talking points, these are all individual files um, that are on society level um, programs and items that are of interest to a lot of um, institutes, chapters, students, pretty much anything. And we've organized them in a way that there's a document that helps you plan out a presentation and there's also a slide deck. So you're able to customize this if you get asked to speak at a student chapter and they're asking you to speak on a specific ASCE topic that you may not be familiar with. You can see if there's a talking point that's already been created. You can get familiar with the topic and then you can slide it into whatever PowerPoint that you've already prepared um, for that kind of an event. We've also got region operation handbooks and section branch operation handbooks. These just contain some really great like to-do lists and items to remember as you're operating as an officer. Um, the section and branch best practice guide is really popular. These are programs and events and things like mentoring programs and happy hours, um, all sorts of different things, report card um, programs as well, state report cards. Uh, basically, if we find out that a section or branch has had a really great event or a really great program, we ask them to submit a best practice. And this is a form that goes through all of the details so it's easily recreatable for another section or branch or in your guys' instance institutes. So this main left-hand column, this has a lot of great things. I encourage you guys to go take a look. Um, I put the link in the chat box so you're also able to access it there. We do have some really great things in this middle column as well that are society level. Things that people are looking for a lot right now are the branding kits. So that has all of your society created um, high res logos. So if you're looking to put that on um, you know, a t-shirt or in this case, let's be honest, a website or some sort of invite on a virtual setting, you can find all of that there. Um, and if you have any questions, there's contact links and emails. So if you need something very specific or you're having trouble finding it, you'll get right to the correct person at ASCE that'll be able to help you navigate that. We've got some legal templates, um, some, the staff directory is always being updated so you guys know who to contact regarding what issue. Um, Ask Counselor Tar Tara, those are our legal counsel's archives. She does a um, monthly column on popular legal questions um, regarding associations, so things like serving alcohol using graphics online, uh, making sure that you are within your copyright uh, rights and not infringing or gonna get asked to provide uh, money for using something that may already be copywritten online. Um, the social media cheat sheet, that's also really popular right now as well as the social media playbook has great tips on uh, maintaining a really healthy social media um, plan. And then finally, the last thing that's been really popular this past <laughs> uh, few months are all of our webinars. So everything that we've put on, we've recorded and you guys can access just by clicking one of these links. We've done things on section and branch virtual happy hours, um, section and branch virtual annual meeting planning. We have virtual resources specific to society level. Um, and then lots of other great things. We've really tried to do one a week and LTC has worked to find topics of interest. We've gotten some great participation. So if you have any questions about those, please let me know. Um, I would happily put my email in the chat box here. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and ask. All right, well hearing none, 
I have another meeting to hop on, but if you do think of anything or if you see anything on there that you're a little confused by or want some more information, please shoot me an email. I can hop on a call with you very easily and help you navigate it. And I would be happy to help share some of these resources. Thank you so much, Hannah. Next, we have Nicole Bayer, who is going to be our incoming chair for LADXCOM. She will talk more about the upcoming LLC planning for the virtual events. Hi, everyone. My name is Nicole, as Suzanne just said, and we're running a little bit behind, so I will go a little bit faster than I might have initially. Um, one big thing is that the deadline for signing up for the LLC, you would have gotten an email this morning from Suzanne, is February or September 24th. So please sign up for the LLC, which is going to be held on October 15th and 16th. And you have probably noticed you're getting a little taste of it right now. So we're going to do a lot more um, providing resources from you, like from and about SEI's national efforts, um, trying to get ways for you to, to get your members involved and for you yourselves to get more involved with SEI national um, and, and locally. And um, we're hoping to inspire you to, with new ideas, uh, the resources that you just saw, hopefully you have time to scroll through them and um, inspire yourselves with with the, all this great information that we've been setting up for you. And um, we're also gonna provide a little bit of networking. Um, so we hope to get everybody socialized a little bit. And we're gonna provide some training opportunities just like we do for other LLCs. This year's training is going to be leading through emotional intelligence and leading and learning from teams. So um, that's the quick version of the LLC. I don't want to take us too far beyond our time. Um, if you have questions, please put them in the chat um, for, for, for any of us that have just been speaking. Um, I will say that the success of the LLC will depend a lot on your participation and we are hoping to make it very interactive just as if it was, or as much as possible, just as if it was a live event. And so we're really looking forward to it. Um, we've been putting a lot of work into it and um, it will be successful as long as we get you all to participate. So please sign up. Suzanne? That's a lot shorter than 15 minutes, Nicole. I thought you were gonna do some presentation and slides. Uh, no, I'm planning on doing the presentation and slides for the LLC. I don't want to um, give away you know, too much. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to give away too much. <laughs> Spoil it. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, so uh, now I'm turning it over to everyone who actually has some questions in regards to some challenges they might be going through in their chapter or some success stories that you have. So I will have it. Um, I will. Uh, you know, invite everyone to speak in terms of what is going on in your chapter. Hey, Suzanne, this is Donald uh, with SCI Colorado. <clears throat> um, just wanted to uh, briefly mention the um, SCI uh, lecture series that we had. Um, Suzanne highlighted that as part of this uh, <clears throat> meeting, but um, just wanted to just reinforce um, <clears throat> how well that event well went. And, um, you know, <clears throat> we've had some follow up, we got some great feedback and look forward to uh, an increased participation within the chapter. It's hard to say exactly what that'll be right now, but um, we will get back to you soon. This is Suzanne, I just, Suzanne Fisher. <laughs> I just wanna say, I hope, um, Hope you all are able to connect and continue in some way virtually with your local members. I know it's really challenging during this time. Um, Donald had a good example from Colorado of, of doing that event virtually. We've had a couple others that we're aware of. Of course, Glenn did an event with Oregon back in May. Um, SEI Dallas or with, with the ASCE has done um, some event that's, that I'm also seeing on YouTube. Um, the new SCI Los Angeles chapter has, has done a virtual event as their inaugural effort. 
with the local ASE section. So I hope, hope you guys are finding your way in that. You know, of course, too, the free webinar is available virtually off to extend remotely to your group participants. So things like that are out there and uh, let us know what you're doing and, and what you need and how we can help. Uh, hi, this is uh, James Deeney from SEI Philadelphia. Uh, we're continuing, we're, we're starting our inaugural virtual meeting this September and we're continuing through the rest of the year. So I don't think we're missing a beat on terms of um, coordinating our monthly meetings. It's just been a little bit of a headache, uh, I guess, getting the virtual down, whether or not we're going to do Zoom or, or Teams or WebEx or stuff like that. But I think we're, <clears throat> we're still hitting our stride and, and getting our, our speakers in line. And I think everybody's been in our, in our group has been doing a great job of, uh, of coordinating that effort. So, but I, the, the information you shared today is uh, actually pretty, pretty great. And I want to thank everybody for, for putting that together. And we'll definitely look into that uh, from our chapter standpoint. Sounds good. I know uh, I see Phil Sutter's on. Mohawk Hudson is planning a virtual event in October, October 14th, I think, right? Yes, so that is correct. Is there a platform that folks um, are finding to be uh, the best for recording events? So for us, we're going to be using Zoom and it seems like that is, um, there was a setting, I'm still learning how to set it up, but there was a setting in there that allows you to re automatically record it to the cloud or other means. So I'll try it that way. I will just mention too that um, uh, the second of our lecture series for 2020 with um, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign is going forward at the end of the month, September 28th, with Emily Guglielmo um, speaking on ASE 7 Seismic. And they, they plan, to, of course, to do that virtually and to share it with, I believe, Michigan Tech. So hopefully we'll hear more about that. Just one, one last reminder, I'll mention, Glenn mentioned at the start of the call about um, membership incentive efforts, recruiting and renewal. I know that's always on our minds. Um, but this is particularly the season right now starting up for membership renewal. There are always resources for ASE if you want or need any of those on member get a member. There's lots of different programs out there, you know, throw a pizza party, funding for things like that. Um, they've got they've got usually incentives that are that are well broadcast, but if you need any information on that, I'd be happy to look it up and direct you. have something to chime in in terms of the, what is the best platform to use in terms of uh, recording videos? Because I know Philip kind of chimed in on that, but do you have any second insight? I'm sorry, who are you? Zoom definitely works best when you're recording. The other thing that you can do with Zoom when you've recorded is if you don't have something like, you know, a YouTube channel that you want to share it to, you can do some basic editing in Zoom at least at the beginning and the end of your meeting or your call or whatever you're recording so that you're just sharing when you share the link out you're just sharing the actual meat of it you don't have the part at the beginning where everybody was waiting and the part at the end where everybody's signing off you can do some of that editing right in zoom yeah that's kind of what i was referring to because we use webex and it captured the entire screen and we had to do like some post-processing that was a little bit challenging to you know, crop right down to the slides and cut out some of that stuff like you mentioned. Yeah, Zoom looks much better um, and it automatically will show just the person that's speaking or it'll show the slides with the person speaking at the top. Um, it does a lot of that for you without you having to, to do a lot of editing. Thank you, Brittany. One other quick resource, um, Hannah talked a little bit about the leadership training committee. They did a webinar not too long ago on how to do like virtual in events and whatnot. Um, and, you know, there were some good ideas about how people on their annual dinners became virtual. So they had pre-recorded videos they incorporated, you know, to avoid like trying to hand off different things and whatnot. Um, and a lot of those were really neat ideas and people kind of ran with it. Uh, one of the sections in Florida went, you know, it was more of a general ASE thing. So 
he did his video in front of the Everglades to talk about, you know, water resources and things like that. So, um, you know, you can kind of make lemon lemonade out of lemons, uh, for lack of a better term, with some of these things too. So uh, that's on, under the, the webinar page uh, that she showed earlier. So if you guys are putting those events together, you might grab a few ideas. Is there a way to capture from the Zoom group chat? Uh, there are some, a lot of great information that is part of chat. Is there a way to send that out to everyone at the end of the meeting? Yeah, I can copy the chat. It, um, Zoom also records the chat and I can pull that from the, the recording and share all those links. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, that would be great. I was thinking the same thing because you know, I've opened up all those screens, but I don't have them all bookmarked and it'd be good to have those exactly. available at future dates. Thanks, Brittany. Problem. Else? I want to respect everyone's time. So it is 12 o'clock, but thank you for joining us for this conference call. If you have any questions, please contact any of us. Have a great day, everyone.